Today we've got you covered, literally. We're all over the map, from picking pecans in Idabel to exploring the history of Fort Sill and battling the big cats in Claremont. Travel with Triple A's Discover Oklahoma. Hi, and welcome to AAA's Discover Oklahoma. I'm Jennifer Reynolds. And I'm Dean O'Lawley. Today we're coming to you from the very beautiful Santa Fe train depot in downtown Oklahoma City. It's a perfect place to start out because from here you can hop on a train and head south for all kinds of adventure. Absolutely, and we're going to do that. In fact, right now we're going to head as far as southeastern Oklahoma. Shell Wagner is going to kick off our extreme map hopping, if you will, from Idabel. Waterfall Creek Pecan Farm is this week's agritourism adventure. Some folks were certain Keith and Ski Bateman must be completely nuts for even considering an overgrown pecan orchard in southeastern Oklahoma. We ended up purchasing it and didn't know anything about pecans except for we eat them. The orchard has a history dating back to the 1950s, but somehow, as these things sometimes happen, the sleepy plot of paradise eventually lost its way and was all but forgotten. You couldn't see through the place hardly because of the growth and everything. When Keith and Ski arrived and started clearing, they were surprised by what they found. We have 1,700 trees on 167 acres of, of land and they're all improved varieties, the paper shell varieties, and there's about five or six different varieties on this farm. Plus, all the equipment needed to run an entire nut factory. And soon, with some help and a lot of determination and the internet, the two figured out they really could run Waterfall Creek Pecan Farm. Walt Disney had a saying that it's kind of fun to do the impossible, so that's why we're here. <laughs> right. Nowadays, the two are well on their way to becoming pecan authorities, from pest control to the art of grafting. And along the way, these Texans fell in love with this little patch of Oklahoma and started to notice that folks who wandered off the highway and down the orchard driveway seemed to fall in love too. People are fascinated when they pull up to see how big the trees are. So they started showing those visitors around. We'll offer up a tour if they would like to go and look around and just see the different um, areas of the, the acreage here of the pecan trees and just take a small tour through and then we show how we process pecans. They opened up a little store so guests could take home some delicious souvenirs. Everything from pecans to candles to seasoning mixes and sauces and spices. Which make awesome corporate gifts, by the way. And eventually, as more folks discovered the serenity, requests to get married here started pouring in. Our cleaning barn, we fix it up when it's not in the harvest program for the weddings, for the reception area, and then, of course, the orchard. You can have your ceremony here up underneath the trees. And then also, we have a building for change rooms and have public restrooms. So obviously, if so many couples choose this venue for such a monumental event, Keith and Ski were on to something when they said this orchard held a certain magic. Even with the labor-intensive workload, these two are still pinching themselves. Anywhere from date night to, you know, for varmint control to just, you know, working on the place together and seeing where it's come from and where it is now and the growth in the future that we're, you know, we're building it together and it's, it's been a blast. Which proves that going nuts might not be such a bad thing after all. At Waterfall Creek Pecan Farm in Idabel, I'm Shell Wagner. You can schedule a tour of the Waterfall Creek Pecan Farm and shop for pecans and other local products. Just go to the Discover Oklahoma page at TravelOK.com for all the information you'll need. With plenty of deep-rooted destinations around our state, agritourism is Oklahoma's growing adventure. 
From southeastern Oklahoma, we're going to Ford explore our way over to the southwestern part of the state and soak up some history. That's right. We're going to go to Fort Sill, and the Fort Sill National Historic Landmark and Museum has been called a national treasure, and for very good reason. Encompassing the original post established in 1869, the Fort Sill National Historic Landmark and Museum includes 28 historic buildings, all original structures. They were all built in the 1870s, with the last buildings being built in 1875, and they were the Post Chapel and the Guard House. The Visitor's Interpretive Center is one of the main buildings open to the public. It was formerly the infantry barracks. As people come into the Interpretive Center, uh, the first thing they're going to see very obviously is the mannequin of a buffalo soldier and his horse as they would have appeared in 1869 when they established Fort Sill, uh, soldiers from the 10th Cavalry. Uh, and they also will see a, a small diorama of the original post and its layout. And then throughout the uh, uh, exhibit area you'll see the origins of Fort Sill, some Native American uh, history about the area, uh, then the establishment of Fort Sill with General Sheridan and uh, the other historic leaders that were here in 1869 at the uh, post. We also have a Buffalo Soldier Gallery that highlights the 10th Cavalry and the contributions they made to the history of Fort Sill. Uh, and then as you go around, we have some uh, exhibits about uh, things the Cavalry developed in its time here, the Army, uh, as well as the Native Americans with the interactions with the Comanche, Kiowa, other tribes in the area and another exhibit, a small exhibit, about the Apache prisoners of war that came here in 1894 with Geronimo and uh, the rest, and Neche and the rest of the uh, uh, Apache leaders. And speaking of Geronimo, he's buried here, as is Quanta Parker and other historic figures from that era. The history one can find and explore here is fascinating and important. I would tell you the most important thing about Fort Sill is uh, that in fact it is the most complete Indian Wars frontier fort uh, in existence anywhere. And so for history buffs, military buffs, uh, that's an important aspect of it. But the history of Fort Sill and the history here at the museum isn't just about the Army and Fort Sill. It's about the history of the tribes and the interaction that the Army had with the tribes. It's with the interaction of the settlers and the establishment not only of the Indian Territory and the security of the Indian Territory, but the t establishment of, of the state of Oklahoma itself because Fort Sill played an integral part uh, in that. Now some of the galleries are open by special arrangement like the restored cavalry barracks from around 1875. When entering, it's as if the soldiers have just stepped outside. This represents a soldier's life from that era quite well. Now someone once said, if you don't know history, you are a leaf that doesn't know it is part of a tree. Well, Fort Sill is history. That's one of the reasons we talk about it, you know, that the history is so tied not just to the army and to the fort, but it's the whole region. And so that's really the important part. And then when the land runs occurred in the 1880s, you know, Fort Sill provided the soldiers that oversaw and supervised those land runs. And when people leave here after touring the facilities, they have a greater appreciation of what Fort Sill provides to the nation, not just the local population, but in fact to the history of the nation. Find a tour schedule along with an abundant amount of historical information just by visiting the Discover Oklahoma page at travelok.com. Now we want to add that the Visitor Center, the School of Fire, the original guardhouse, and the Old Post Chapel, they're all open to the public on a daily basis. But you will need to call ahead to make an appointment if you want to see the restored cavalry barracks, a warrior's journey gallery, or the Native American collection. All right, now we're off and running on our all over the map adventure today. Up next, a trip where the mode of transportation is a memorable adventure in itself. We'll explain when AAA's Discover Oklahoma continues right after this. We had some family members that had switched to AAA and they kept telling us how much money they were saving and found out they could save us money too and so we ended up switching. We have three kids and there's not a lot of money left at the end of every month. It ended up saving us quite a bit. Our car insurance alone saved us probably about $600. Any money you can save during the month and have some left over, um, that's, a, that's a pretty big deal. Having insurance is important. Having affordable insurance that you can trust is a blessing. Plenty of room to swing a rope. Plenty of heart and plenty of home. Oklahoma, where the river comes sweeping down the plain. And the waving wheat can sure smell sweet. Where the wind comes driving on the rain. Oh, Oklahoma, every night. My honey lemon I sit alone and talk. Watch your heart. Huh? Can you raise these levels in the sky? You know we do. 
belong to the land And the land we belong to is red Come see for yourself. Approximately a year and a half ago, my friend Gary Wise, who I go to church with, had uh, become a AAA agency, and he had asked me, he said, let's just check, see what we can do. We tried to compare apples to apples to his current coverage. And uh, my premium went down $800 for the same insurance for this house. I was tickled. I mean, $800 is a lot of money. Go see Gary. Get your AAA insurance. It's, it's head and shoulders above the rest of the companies. Welcome back to AAA's Discover Oklahoma. We're all over the map this week. Now this all over the map concept is nothing new to Jeff Roberts, the magic man, or to Shell Wagner, as you're aware. Now along with Joan Henderson, the publisher of Oklahoma Today magazine, they embark on a whirlwind tour around the state this time each year. You may know it as the where in the state is the magic man trip in which they zigzag all over Oklahoma, giving away trips as they go. What began as a way to promote local travel on Memorial Day weekend has evolved into a summertime ritual for radio audiences, magazine subscribers, and social media addicts. When KMGL radio personality Jeff the Magic Man Roberts and Oklahoma Today magazine publisher Joan Henderson and I climb inside a Reynolds Ford and hit the Oklahoma back roads to root out the state's best and quirkiest travel destinations for where in the state is the Magic Man. The thought behind it really was that we had talked about how there's so many great places to go in, in our nation that, that are awesome, but we forget what's here in our backyard. We'll spend the day exploring and gathering prize packages and then report back to listeners the next morning during the show's 5.30 to 10 a.m. time slot. We'll give away a free trip each day that includes free accommodations and other great stuff. Like us on Facebook at Where in the State is the Magic Man to follow our journey. And listen to 104.1 in Oklahoma City each morning the week of May 20th for a chance to win some great getaways of your own. As we talk about being all over the map, some people like to take their trips by plane, some do it by car. And others by train. We're getting there actually as part of the adventure. I love traveling by train because it's not only scenic, it's so relaxing. Train travel came into vogue in the 40s, and today, thanks to the Heartland Flyer, you can still take that sentimental journey. So, all aboard. Well, one of the things that people forget about when they travel is the fact that part of the adventure could be the travel itself. And we like to see for people to get on the train and experience this firsthand. And everybody has gone on I-35 many times uh, from Dallas to Oklahoma City, and there's so many things that they're missing if they could only take the train. After a 20-year absence of rail service between Oklahoma and Texas, on June 15, 1999, the Heartland Flyer embarked on its maiden voyage. A joint venture between Amtrak and the Oklahoma Department of Transportation made all this possible. After one month of service, the Heartland Flyer had already carried 11,000 passengers, and within its first year, 71,400 folks had ridden the rails between Oklahoma City and Fort Worth, far exceeding all of Amtrak's expectations. The Heartland Flyer offers a variety of special travel packages from a Santa Claus train during the holidays to the Red River rivalry, which, by the way, will turn your trip to Dallas into a pep rally on rails. Uh, one of our biggest events is the OU Texas game. This is, this is uh, an exciting time. Uh, we all know what the rivalry is south of the Red River. Uh, we have special rates uh, for people on the round trips, and the train will take you right into Dallas on Friday and pick you up on Sunday from Dallas. Something seniors may be interested in is the Heartland Flyers Senior Club, available for an annual membership fee of $10, and that entitles you to a complimentary round trip. The Heartland Flyer offers other interesting packages, and the Flyer's user-friendly website will make your travel plans a snap. One of the easiest things if you haven't been on the Heartland Flyer before is go to the heartlandflyer.com website. This will give you all the information that you'll need to know and uh, to how to make your reservations, and it also has a link to the Amtrak.com if you want to do it by computer. Uh, those that don't have those can call the 1-800-USA rail number. Uh, they're very helpful folks, and uh, they're going to actually help you plan your trip. So you arrive at the station with your ticket or confirmation number. Uh, and when you get on the train, it's very simple. You make your reservations, you come up to the train, uh, bring your either tickets if they have time to send them to you. If not, uh, they will give you a confirmation number and a price, and you can pay the conductors on the train. 
From booking your reservations to providing you with information on every stop between Oklahoma City and Fort Worth, the Heartland Flyer will make your trip a carefree, enjoyable journey. To find out all about the Heartland Flyer's schedule, ticket prices, and destinations, go to the Discover Oklahoma page at TravelOK.com and we'll help you find it. Coming up, we're going to make a quick trip across to northeastern Oklahoma. The next stop on our All Over the Map adventure is Claremore. It's going to be a noodling showdown. Stay with us as AAA's Discover Oklahoma continues in about two minutes. We had some family members that had switched to AAA and they kept telling us how much money they were saving and kept telling us that we should look into it. And so we decided that we should go see what, what we could do. We have three kids and there's not a lot of money left at the end of every month. And so any penny that you can save is a big deal. AAA was something I always heard of when I was growing up. And when people talked about it, they talked about it in a reliable way. And so when we switched to AAA, um, it was something that we just trusted from the beginning. It ended up saving us quite a bit. Our car insurance alone saved us probably about $600 a year. Our life insurance, we were actually able to double our coverage and our premium still went down um, close to about half as well. Again, it's not something you ever want to think about as you grow up and become a grown up with a family, but it's definitely something that you need to have. Having insurance is important. Having affordable insurance that you can trust is a blessing. Welcome back to AAA's Discover Oklahoma. We are literally crisscrossing our state this week, toward exploring our way to some grand adventures. And that trail is now going to lead us to Claremore, where there's a special battle, if you will, of sorts, and it's called the Battle of the Big Cats. Caleb Summers has been noodling for years all around the state and at the Oki Noodling Tournament this past year, he and his team took first place bringing in a 71 pound catfish and it beat the previous record. But now Caleb has put together a new tournament called Battle of the Big Cats Route 66 Richest Noodling Showdown. So this is the first annual uh, tournament for this part of our state, uh, especially right here in Claremore. There's never been any kind of noodling tournament like this. Uh, like I said earlier, the TV shows have popularized the sport. They're starting, we're starting to see uh, more noodlers come out, more people are wanting to learn, more people are wanting to get involved. So I thought, let's jump on the wave right now. Let's have a tournament right here in Claremore. Let's really get this event exposed uh, to this part of our world. So this is, uh, is going to be the first big shebang. Months in the planning, Caleb says they are expecting a good crowd June the 14th and 15th, and the activities will base at the Claremore Expo Center. The facilities here in Claremore are awesome. Uh, the trade show is going to be great because of the air-cooled environment. June's hot. It's going to be real cool in here to be in the 60s. Uh, we're going to have, like I said, the tank outside. Uh, people can get in that tank, uh, you know, getting wet. There's just going to be all kinds of fun events going on, really starting the summer out. A lot of people are really pumped about this because this has never been done in this part of the state. And uh, it's kind of a taboo sport anyway. And nobody ever gets to see what they're really swimming in the water with anyway until the day that all these fish get brought out. There's just an air of excitement and adventure and craziness surrounding the art of noodling. And while there are certainly several dangerous elements to the sport, you definitely have to know what you're doing. And Caleb teaches everyone safety is the number one priority. I was taught on a different terrain than what we have up here to offer in Northeastern Oklahoma. We have a lot of dangerous things like rock structures falling in on you. Uh, when you're going into some of these caverns and stuff, you have to worry about things falling in on you. Will a rock trap your arm? But for Caleb, the sport of noodling can also be, strangely enough, calming. It really is the most relaxing drug because there's so much more that goes into it between uh, the swimming. The, I, we become such river rats from this time. Uh, and the spring forward, we're on the river almost every day. And there's something that comes with that. Uh, and you'd have to know it. You'd have to experience it to know what I'm talking about. But you get so used to being on that water. And you'll see, you'll see things that you don't ever see. And you'll see lots of noodling adventures at the tournament June the 14th and 15th. If you're a noodler or a wannabe, there may be some prize money in your future. We'll have all the information you need for entering the Battle of the Big Cats tournament on the Discover Oklahoma page at TravelOK.com. Well, don't move, because there's more to come. All right, after a short break, we've been traveling, and it's time to stop and dig in, so to speak. We'll explain when AAA's Discover Oklahoma comes back in two short minutes. In early April of this year, we had one of the most violent hailstorms I've ever seen in my life. And my wife called me and you could hear the noise over the telephone. 
by the time I got home, got out here from town, there was hail everywhere. Baseball, size hail, golf ball everywhere. Uh, my truck was beat to pieces. It was, it was a pretty violent hailstorm. I called my AAA agent, Gary Wise, a friend of mine, asked him what the procedure was, give me the phone numbers, we need to turn this in. We hope to always be there whenever they need us, and that, that is the most important client that we have, is the one that we're talking to at the time. I feel AAA has treated me with the utmost respect. I feel like they were went above and beyond to be respectful of our, our time and our property. AAA definitely is there for the right reason. The president of the insurance company call and ask, you know, what could, what could they do to help Woodward and help our clients in their time of need. Motor Trend asked SUV drivers to take the EcoBoost Challenge. They drove Ford Explorer versus Dodge Durango. The Explorer has more power than the Durango. 28 miles a gallon? That's unbelievable. I think I look like a hot mama in this Explorer. I felt old school in that. I want to feel sleek and new. You know, I hate to be slamming this Dodge, but the Explorer is leaps and bounds better. Get a Ford Explorer with 0% financing for 60 months or drive one for $279 a month. Now it's your Oklahoma Ford dealer. Welcome back. AAA Oklahoma makes this show possible and does a lot of other great things around our state. Here's a look at today's AAA. Hi, Christy Gettle here with AAA Oklahoma. With online travel sites and the ability to book directly through most airlines and hotels, what's the incentive for booking with a travel agent? First of all, we save you time by doing all of the research for you. With years of experience and the nation's largest travel agency backing us, we're experts when it comes to planning the vacation of your dreams. Secondly, we save you money by guaranteeing the lowest rates available, and we get you perks by giving you exclusive access to member amenities and rewards. Plus, we're world travelers ourselves and have experienced many of our packages firsthand. So our recommendations are based on real life experience. What website can say that? So if you're ready to plan a trip with someone 100% dedicated to your vacation needs, Visit AAA.com. AAA, for the ones who matter most to you. We've covered a lot of ground this week. We started out in Idabel, zipped over to mm -hmm. Fort Sill and Lawton, then took a train trip, and then headed to Claremore. And we're not finished yet. In fact, this will become crystal clear, bad pun, because we're going to go up to northwestern Oklahoma to some real Oklahoma digs. Shell Wagner took her family on a treasure hunt in the Great Salt Plains and invited us to tag along. It may take a minute for your eyes to adjust to the spectacle of the Salt Plains National Wildlife Refuge. As foreign a landscape as the moon surface, this seven miles long salt encrusted expanse is perhaps best viewed from the observation tower near the entrance gate. The platform is also a great place to observe migratory waterfowl, some of them endangered, that feed and nest on the plains. They rule the roost here. This is a wildlife refuge after all. But this area, the largest saline flat in the central lowlands of North America, has had many purposes. Indian tribes and early pioneer settlers used the salt. It was also used as a bombing test site in World War II. But it has always been a tourist attraction, which is why my girls and I are here, because even though the salt plains may be devoid of vegetation, they are positively fertile for growing a crystallized form of gypsum, the selenite crystal. We're on a mission to increase our Oklahoma souvenir collection because any Okie worth her salt should have a jar full of these. These crystals found in northwestern Oklahoma are the only ones in the world with the milk chocolate colored hourglass shape inside. A placard near the entrance gives tips for unearthing these one-of-a-kind gems and a cordoned off drive leads you to the designated digging area. Each section is used in a rotating basis to allow time for new crystals to grow. You'll want to bring along a few items to dig for our official state crystal. Shovels, containers for your treasures, water. Start by making a hole, and you won't have to dig very deep before water begins to seep in. Then splash water into the sides of the hole until crystals emerge. You'll need to be careful with them. They're fragile when they're still wet. So you'll want to let them dry in the sunshine. Crystal digging is permitted April 1st through October 15th, sunrise to sunset and collectors can take home up to 10 pounds of crystals plus one large cluster. There are few things more fun than playing in the mud for kids of any age, and crystal digging becomes a contest to see who can find the biggest, the most perfectly shaped, the best hourglass, or the largest cluster. 
Crystals measuring up to seven inches long have been found here, along with complex clusters weighing as much as 38 pounds. We didn't find anything nearly that impressive, but we still counted ourselves winners because this freakishly amazing natural wonder belongs to us all. At the Salt Plains National Wildlife Refuge in Jet, I'm Shel Wagner. Can you dig it? To plan your next trip to Great Salt Plains State Park, just visit the Discover Oklahoma page at TravelOK.com. Man, I don't know about you, but after this week's show, I feel like I actually have some miles on me. When we say we're going to be all over the map, we mean we're going to be all over the map. We want to thank the folks here at the Santa Fe Depot and the Heartland Flyer for hosting us. And we also want to thank all of you for watching. Coming up next week, tucked away treasures from a country stay nestled in the woods to world-class collections in a small southeastern Oklahoma town and the U.S. Senior Open tucked in amongst the oak trees in Edmond. Hope you'll join us. So until next time, remember, there's always something to discover in Oklahoma. Production vehicle provided by the Oklahoma Ford Dealers, official partner of the Oklahoma Tourism and Recreation Department. 